you later. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian. Right out of Oklahoma City, we are hanging out with the legendary, if you will, Mark Rizzo. What's up, man? Hey, dude. How are you, man? It's good to be here. Thank you. Dude, thank you for coming on the show. You have been very, very busy, it seems like, um, during the pandemic. And now it's like I, I looked you up on, uh, on YouTube. You got music video after music video after music video with, like, different bands that you're in. And dude, how, how do you keep up with, <laughs> with, with remembering all the different songs and having time to do all these, all these shoots and things like that, dude? You know what, dude? It, honestly, it's very easy. Um, I, I just love playing music, and I want to stay busy. I, I love writing. I love practicing. I love playing live. I love being on the road. I love being home playing and writing. Um, so for me, this is just some, I'm doing what I love, man, and I just want to keep doing it. How many current bands would you say you're in right now? Because you got, let's see, you got Hail the Horns, right? Yep. Um, then you have Revenge Beast, which has a new music video that we're going to play. And then you have El Nino. Is there anything else that you're in? Uh, and then my solo project, you know, that's um, that's that's probably, you know, what I what I do the most. It's it's uh, um, what I consistently do all the time. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's like four projects. Plus, I got another project called Acoustic Vendetta. Um, but that project we just do locally in my area around New Jersey, New York City. I think it's pretty easy to keep a solo project because it's just you like, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate and lucky um, that I'm able to go out on the road by myself and, and just play to a backing track and, and people seem to dig it. And um, I'm very lucky that promoters and clubs ask me back to do my solo gig because it makes um, touring affordable and just makes things so, so much easier for me to get out on the road and, and do my solo project. Do you, do you do the vocals on your solo project? Because I know you came up with some instrumentals, like four instrumental albums. But on this one, do you do vocals on it as well? Uh, my stuff is mostly instrumental, but um, okay. I, I, I do try to cater to the fans. And I always throw in some Soulfly songs, some some Sepultura, Cavalier Conspiracy, and then Slayer and Metallica. Um, a lot of classic metal stuff. So I, I kind of mix it with my instrumental stuff, depending on the crowd. Yeah, man. And let's, you know, let's talk about El Nino for a second. So you were like one of the original members of the band and then you're back in with the band now. And was it, there was like a hiatus where you were not with them, correct? I mean, yeah, I basically left El Nino back in 2002 uh -huh. um, and then basically joined Soulfly, you know, immediately. And then mm -hmm. 18 years of my my life just flew by on the road with Soulfly. It's really pretty incredible how fast the time went. Um, but, but yeah, I was, I was away from El Nino for a while, but during the pandemic, you know, me and the guys, we, we basically reconnected, you know, they, they hit me up a lot, asked how I was doing and, um, and just one thing led to another. We, we first did a, a live feed, um, playing some of the songs off the first record, uh, revolution and, um, it went great and it was great to catch up with everybody and, and hang out and, and, uh, and, and do that live gig. And then it turned into, hey, man, you want to make a new record with us? And I was like, sure, you know, and the Hell vibe yeah. was there. And, and uh, I'm crazy about the new singer, Marcos. He's, he's one of the best singers in metal. Um, so just one thing led to another with, with the record. And then um, now I'm doing uh, the tour with them in March and, and basically rejoin the band. Dude, were fans like super fucking excited to find out that you were rejoining the band? Like, was that like a big like celebrational type moment when you finally made it public? I'll tell you, it, it, it coincided with with me leaving Soulfly and mm -hmm. uh, it, it there was more, um, I think, more attention and more uh, excitement over me rejoining El Nino. It really blew my mind away, you know, that that people, that fans were were that excited for me for my return. Um, so it was great, man. You know, I mean, I've been getting nothing but love from the fans for the for the uh, reuniting with with El Nino. And I can't wait to get out there and tour and, and rock out for all the fans. That's awesome. And we are going to mostly talk about your future stuff. Briefly want to explain, you know, you were with Soulfly. There was some, looks like some, I don't know, bad blood, some beefing going on. Is that all in the past now? Is it like move forward, just get on past it? Yeah, yeah, a little bit here, a little, little, little bit not. But, you know, it is what it is, man. Um, you know, it was a rough time during COVID. I, I, I yeah. talked about it already a lot. Mm -hmm. Honestly, talked about it, you know, nothing but but honesty from from my side. Mm -hmm. And um, it is what it is. But I'm glad it all went down. And um, I'm in a way better place, you know, mentally, 
a uh, lot more healthier for everything in my life. And I'm moving forward. And, and uh, I know the fans, uh, you know, they all got my back in this situation. And, and we're moving forward. And this new El Nino record is going to represent all that excitement. And my new solo record, Revenge Beast. So everything's all good right now in my life. Dude, I think a lot of people, like generally speaking, even even like just everyday, just non-musicians as well, I think during the the height of the pandemic back in like March, April, May of 2020, I think everyone kind of lost a little bit of who they were. People were staying inside, not really socializing. I remember inviting friends over and they're like, no, nah, man, I'm not coming over right now because of, you know, the, the, the COVID. And I was like, dude, just st stop by, man. Just stay away if you want to. But yeah, yeah. I remember even going around people and being paranoid that I was going to get sick, even if they didn't look sick. <laughs> you know, you know like, it was a crazy time, man. And, and and some people had a very rough time. Some people obviously didn't survive. You know, God bless yeah. them. And, and uh, some, some people lost everything. And then some yeah. people, you know, made out. You know, some people <laughs> prospered during the pandemic. Um, yeah. You know, I was not one of those people. You know, I, I got back to doing blue collar work like I grew up doing. And I was very happy to have a job. I mean, you know, I'm not complaining. I was very happy that a friend of mine offered me a job. And I got out there and hustled. Um, and I, I think getting back to work and, and, and having to really hustle during the pandemic, it, it opened up my eyes to a lot of things in my life, you know, especially the last 18 years of my life. So, you know, I just was like, man, I'm moving forward with my life. This is it, you know? So, uh, the, for me, the pandemic was, uh, was definitely a, uh, a career and life changing experience for me. And, you know, man, I'm in a better place, man. Totally. Yeah. There's something to say about getting out there and. And going to work, you know, I mean, I, yeah. you know, I had my own thing going on before COVID and having to go back to work for somebody else really was kind of humbling, but it also made me feel better about just life in general. I just get out there and socialize again and being like in, in a work environment. Mm -hmm. Personally, mentally, it was healthy for me. So yeah. Yeah. happy, happy I did it. All right. So let's go on to uh, we have two bands we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to play two different music videos uh, from you. And the first one that we want to play is Revenge Beast. And this song is called, it's, is it Egregor? How do you, how do you say it? Uh, Egregor, I believe. Yes. Egregor? Okay. I mean, oh, I'm not good with spelling either, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm horrible. Still, uh, working on it. You know, I look at the dictionary every day. <laughs> um, and this song, the music video just came out like, what, like a month ago or something like that? I think that not video dropped about a month ago. We had, had a great lyric video done by the incredible CNSY Pro. And um, and they did a great job. And, um, you know, the video is awesome. We got another video dropping for another song from Revenge Beast. And, you know, Revenge Beast, dude, it speaks for itself, man. Everyone that has heard it, um, I think, has become big fans of the band because it's super heavy. It's just straight up old school death metal. Yep. Um, we're just trying to be brutal and heavy. But but the guitar playing, uh, I'm definitely doing a lot of melodic leads that people may know me for. Um, but you know what, man? The music speaks for itself you know whoever was bummed out about my leaving from soulfly check out revenge beast and i promise you 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 will not be bummed out anymore dude this song is sick i'm gonna talk about this song talk about the band then we're gonna go on to hail the horns let's check it out right now here is revenge beast <laughs>
<laughs> dude. Dude, that is so sick. I do, I do got to say that that Christine Sam uh, yeah. says, "Tell she, Mark he is my favorite guitarist." With a she's heart. my she's my favorite person. So the feeling is <laughs> mutual. She actually did that video there. So um, yeah, that's my girlfriend. She's very, very, extremely <laughs> talented and does all the video work for Revenge Beast and Hail the Horns. So so yeah. But, uh, so how yeah. did you get with how did you get with Revenge Beast, man? There's a yeah, is that's a, a sing is that a singer you've worked with in the past? Uh or you knew to get this project started? You know what, man? It's a funny story, man. So the guys from Revenge Beast, um, they're from Baltimore, Doug, Jay, and Brennan. And uh they had a band called Purgatory Earth that I produced. But even before I produced it, it's funny how I met these guys. I met these guys just hanging out after a Soulfly show. Um, you know, anyone that knows me, when, whenever I was on tour with Soulfly, I was always hanging out with the fans, you know, um, and, and just talking, you know, and hanging out with everybody like I always do. I, I, I love hanging out with the fans and talking music. So I met these guys after the show, just at the bar hanging out and we just started talking. And and then um, one thing led to another, you know, a month or two later, I was coming down to play a solo gig um, with their band Purgatory Earth. They, they booked me in Baltimore. And then from there, they asked me to produce um their band purgatory earth so we we did a record together that I, that i love and then it was like you know what man I, you know we were home during you know the pandemic and and everybody was looking to do stuff so i was like you know man let's start a band together oh, um, yeah. so that's how revenge be started man was just from being you know bored at, at, at hell at home and we just started sending tracks back and forth and uh we did the whole record from home and we're going to be releasing a new record you know probably within a month or two i wish i could sing like that guy Dude, Jay, <laughs> I like, can't do that. Yo, let me tell you, he's one of the best death metal growling singers. And not only is he one of the best at what he does, but he's also incredible with lyrics. Like if you really read into his lyrics, they're mm. very thoughtful. He puts a lot of effort and time and thinking into his lyrics, which is really cool because I, I personally, I'm not really into lyrics, but when mm. I read Jay's lyrics, like I get something out of it, man. So uh, it's good stuff. What I found interesting, I had to look it up. I looked up what egregore meant because I didn't. I didn't know. I said, "Is that even a word? Like that has to mean something." So I looked it up, and the meaning is an occult concept representing a distinct, non-physical entity that arises from a collection, a collective group of people. So yeah. that's like deep as fuck, like in itself. Like you that's know, like who knows what that means? I never yeah. would have knew what that meant. Never heard Me that too. word before. That's that's my singer Jay, man. He he puts a lot of uh, energy into into to writing his lyrics, man. So it's it's just it's just a pleasure to be in a band with these guys and be working. Personal question: Do you dye your beard, or is it just that black? It's wow. Oh, yeah, that's funny. It's that black, but I actually get, I'm starting to get some grays, man. I got a hell of grays, dude. You're older yeah. than me. I'm like yeah. I was looking at your pictures. I'm like that son of a bitch. He got to well, dye yeah. his beard. I used to go, I don't diet at all, but I do, if it's a stressful day, I get more grays in and, and I used to have the side, the side chops, but they're starting to go real gray. So uh, <laughs> I've been asked to shave it, you know? See, those are the tough questions we ask on the show. Right. <laughs> those are the tough ones. Yeah. All right. Hail the horns. Now this band is, is it with God size records? Yes. God size records has, uh, they're going to put out, you know, our, our stuff as soon as we, we get some some original stuff recorded. Um, you know, they've been Nick over at God size has been a huge help with supporting the band and booking cool, and, and all my projects really. Um, and, and so, uh, hail the horns is basically, um, it's a project with, with myself, Tony Campos from, from static X and our good friend Opus from dead by Wednesday. And we're just a three piece. And, and basically it's just something that me and Tony, when we were in Soulfly together, we always talked about doing a project, you know, we always worked great together. I love his bass playing and, and, uh, his vocals, um, so again, during the pandemic, you know, we were like, you know, man, let's, let's try to do something, you know? So we, first thing we did was record a, a kiss cover, uh, for, for God of Thunder, That's what uh, we have, yeah. which is pretty funny. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm not like the biggest kiss fan. I have a lot of respect for them, but, but Tony and Opus are huge kiss fans. So we did God of Thunder. And I think we did a great job with the song. Um, I really dig it. And it, I think it basically, you know, we are going to have originals, but we're definitely doing more covers for now. Um, the next release we put out is going to be an original that we're working on, but when we get out there and we do shows, like we, we we've been doing little mini tours, uh, for the yeah. last two weeks and we've been going out and just playing a lot of cover songs from, you know, classic metal bands, rock bands to, to even, you know, we've been throwing in songs from all our, our back catalog, Soulfly stuff. We, uh, we're going to probably throw in, you know, maybe a, a static X song eventually. So it's just, it's really just a, a fun, good time, hard rock metal band. 
That's cool, man. You know, it's it's a cover song, but it obviously has your own touch to it, like big time, you know? Absolutely. We definitely, uh, I think, made it heavier. Um, I definitely made it a little more shreddy. And Tony did an incredible job uh, singing on it. I mean, I, I, I really didn't know exactly how great of a singer Tony was until we started doing this project. I always thought he was more of a death metal growl type singer but no nah, man he can sing and hit notes man so we, we plan on going in a, a, a pretty melodic direction eventually too with the originals isn't it crazy your perception of somebody before you really get to know them like even if you just meet someone like how we're talking here you know mm-hmm. and then you actually get to sit down and, and do a project with somebody you really understand who they are as a person and a lot of times it's not who you originally thought uh they would be or, or what they could do so that that's pretty cool man you also did you do a show with the the misfits back there oh yeah yeah so um back in 2015 i was um i was asked to from jerry only um who lives very near you know i'm, I'm in new jersey and, and mm. I grew up basically in the same area that jerry did um and basically they were looking for another guitar player and um jerry asked me we had a mutual friend and and uh, we connected, and and they asked me to join the band. So I um, I did two songs I recorded with them, um, and then I did one uh, Comic Con convention out in in Holland back in 2015. And I was going to continue um, doing the band full time, but it, it just everything in my life just kind of got hectic between Soulfly and and uh, and the Misfits. Um, but I really do wish I would have moved forward with the misfits but you know it, it's all good man it will, will, i hope maybe in the future i can do something with jerry again because i'm the biggest misfits fan and it was just an that, incredible that, that is so cool especially playing met and, and and sharon just said uh misfits and then stacy's on here giving some love and uh anthony on here from a band called saving jackie anthony i'm actually wearing your uh, band shirt right now by the way <laughs> shout, shout out to them uh as a metal player though mm-hmm. Doing punk music was it because misfits there's there's they're a different kind of punk, but was it like a did you have to tone down how you played if you like if you were gonna stay with them or they were just kind of rolling with whatever you were gonna do? You know what, man? I I, I grew up on the misfits, they're they were my favorite punk hardcore band of awesome. Them. I love the misfits, you know, even though I'm, I'm into shred metal and technical stuff, I also love punk hardcore, you know, I, where I grew up, that was part of uh you know, the, the style of music that I would go see at shows and the bands I played with, you know, I mean, anyone that knows me knows I'm, I'm a huge fan of old school hardcore, especially the more punky stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But for me, it was just, it was a pleasure, man. I, I loved every minute of playing with the misfits. Um, Jerry was so good to me, man. He's such a good dude. He treated me so good. And, and honestly, I was very close um, to leaving Soulfly back in 2015 to do the misfits full time. And the only thing that really stopped me was just I knew they were going to do the reunion um, eventually. Right. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is, man. I, I'm very happy that the Misfits did um, the reunion because I'm, I'm a, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. Awesome, dude. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I love the Misfits. I love Soulfly. I, your, your music that you got on here, that, that uh, Revenge Beast song, dude, was fucking badass, man. Well, like, you got to be, like, it has a lot of energy behind it, you know? Listen, you know, I mean, like I said, anyone who was bummed out about my leaving um, with Soulfly, listen, man, you know, what I brought to Soulfly, I'm now doing in Revenge Beast. And you, you, you totally understand, you know, once people get this new Revenge Beast record, you're going to totally get, you know, what my reasons were and, and everything. Now, back to Hail the Horns. Do you guys plan on doing a U.S. tour anytime soon? Uh, we were, so we're just doing like little mini tours here and there when Tony's available and I'm available and, and Opus, um, what we got coming up next is we're playing in Connecticut, um, at the Toad, Toad's place, January 15th, which is Opus's annual birthday bash show. Um, so that's going to be the next hail the horn show. And then we're going out to Montana at the end of the month to, uh, make up some shows that we had booked prior that were canceled due to COVID. Um, and then hopefully, um, we're talking about maybe getting over to Europe, you know, so, so hail the horns is, is definitely going to be a touring project um, when everybody's available. Awesome. All right. Let's check out your, let's check out a uh, God of thunder by hail the horns. Um, that was what we originally were going to talk about, but I had all these other questions I want to ask you, man. So let's check out this song right now. God of thunder by hail the horns. Here we go. Yeah. 
Oh, oops. Hold on. Right on. There we go. There we go. Man, Yo. so your two different bands that you're in have two uh, different styles. I do got to give a – there's a bunch of people commenting on here. Kay Tyler says, what's up? Uh, what's up? Stacey Don here. Everyone's on here, dude. You, how, how cool does it feel to, like, in, in your own right, be a guitar player that's extremely well-known and these awesome, legendary-type bands – the people that you get to know and associate with in your music. Like, did you think this would be your life when you were younger growing up? Um, it was always my dream, you know, to, to do music full time. And, and, um, but you know, every day is a hustle, man. You know, it's, uh, it's not easy, you know, and I'm, I'm still hustling, you know, doing, doing my thing and trying to get to the next level with all these projects and get everything off the ground and stuff. Uh, but I am very lucky, man. I'm very lucky for all the opportunities, all the bands I played in. I always took it very seriously, all the tours, all the records I made. Um, so I'm very lucky, man. Was there ever a time uh, when you felt at first, like when you first started making music and started making money with music and going on these tours, like did it feel so surreal? And do you ever get used to that feeling of being on stage and rocking the house, man, like a sold out crowd? Does that ever lose his excitement? Never, never. I'm, I'm, I, I don't care if I'm playing in front of five people, you know, or if I'm playing in front of 5,000 or 50,000. To me, I, I'm just the happiest guy in the world when I get a guitar in my hand. You know, when I'm playing guitar, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm on cloud nine, man. You know, it, that's, that's the end all be all is going on stage and playing my guitar um, to the best of my ability and practicing and getting better. That's for me, that's the number one payoff. Um, and, and I take it very seriously, man. You know, I mean, it's, it's, that's why every show I give a hundred percent, I show up and I want to be prepared. Uh, I want to be in tune and, and, and know my stuff because it's, that's the most important thing to me is, uh, putting on a hundred percent of a performance of a good show. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Dude, thank you so much for coming on the show. I do, do you have merchandise for, for your, for all these bands? I, mean, I know El Nino has merch, but does mm -hmm. Hail the Horns have merch and, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, we we uh, all uh, follow us on, on social media and, and and people can find the links for, for all the merch for all my different projects. Right on. And merch, you got all your music on all the different platforms. You got music videos on YouTube, man. Dave, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. I want to thank you once again for, for coming on to the show, dude. I appreciate you coming on and spending some time with me on this Monday, mm -hmm. Monday night, I guess, if you will. So yeah. I want to thank everyone that listens to The Loud Spot. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on all podcasting platforms as well. Apple, Spotify, Deezer, the whole nine yards. We've got a Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash the loud spot. $3 really does help us out. I say it all the time. I'm not seeing any $3, but come on, let's get three, let's get $3 in every mm -hmm. now and again. Hey, Mark, don't go anywhere. Stay right there till after the outro song. I got one more question for you after the show. Peace out, rock on, and much love. This is the loud spot outro by nothing short of tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the loud spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does something short of tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show, so to get more episodes, make an order. This is over. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to click the like and share button. Don't forget to go to our YouTube and subscribe. If you want to listen to our audio and pick up some cool merch, go to www.theloudspot.net. Peace out. Rock on. Much.